Hi, I'm George Whittem, and today I'll be reviewing for you the Isovox. It's a fantastic product for setting up a voiceover studio in any place, theoretically. We're going to find out how well it can work. It's the Isovox 2 we're checking out today. It's the new incarnation of this product. It's a portable isolation booth, and it's been sent to me by the founder and creator of this product, Philip Olson. So I'm really excited to be unboxing this thing for you today, but not just unboxing it, also showing how it goes together, letting you hear how it's gonna sound, and seeing if it's a product that's practical for use if you're recording voiceover and reading from a script. That's the big question I think we need to answer today, beyond does it sound good? So let's get into it. Let's start tearing open the box and see what's inside. It's still sealed. So here it is. This is the box that the Isovox 2 is going to come into you. And these are shipping right now in the United States from B&H and several other dealers. They run right around a thousand bucks and that's with free shipping. So let's see what a thousand dollars will get you. Is this the way to get your home studio set up quickly and get great sound quality without a major use of space in your home studio? Now well, let's go take a look. Let's cut this baby open. Do, do, do. Unboxing videos, all the rage on YouTube. So I guess it's my turn to do that. All right. So here's what we're looking at. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the whole box, I'm gonna flip it over on this chair, and let it slide gracefully out of the box. Ta-da! Box over here. Okay, so it's, it's wrapped in a uh, fabric, protective fabric layer to keep it clean. All right. And there's what it looks like in its collapsed form. So this is as small as it's ever gonna get. So if you're thinking about where you're going to store it when you're not using it, think about something about roughly the size of that box because that is fully collapsed. So there's a pictogram here of the instructions on how to assemble it. So we're gonna be kind of following along on this. You're gonna be watching as I do it so you can see exactly what it takes to put this thing together. So it says first, attach the Velcro stripes to the Velcro sides on the base plate. So we gotta find the base plate. This looks very base plate-like to me. It's very heavy and sturdy and strong. And it's got a bracket in it, which looks like it's the bracket that actually holds the microphone. So I think we found the base plate. Okay, so now we're going to attach to the base plate, the two sides. The back that's behind the microphone is very, very thick. And that's by design because um, a thick backing will do a better job of absorbing low frequency and soaking up the booming boxy sound that you get in a lot of other products. So let's continue going through what is inside the box. We've got several pieces out already. Let's get the uh, these are obviously the sides. This is what the profile of the Isovox looks like. Here's the other side of the Isovox, the reverse. It appears to be the roof of the Isovox. Yes, I believe that's what that is. So let's get a table in here and, and get it all set up so it'll be easier to assemble it. And we'll be right back. All right, table should make it easier for this assembly. They have you doing it on the floor, but we're a little too civilized around here for that. So we need our two side pieces. One goes on each side. And again, I'm assembling this for the first time right in front of you guys. I have never put one of these things together before in my life. So we're all in it together. This, this is more forward on this side than it is towards the back. So that's the front. And then we have a Velcro strip that goes there. So I was trying to get the Velcro here to stick, but it's not sticking. And that's because I just realized there is a protective layer on the back to keep the Velcro from hooking onto stuff while it's being packaged and shipped. So 
Got to take that off. All right. Very thoughtfully designed and packed, I have to say. And now you can actually see the mounting plate where the speaker actually, the speaker stand you're going to see in a little bit, uh, enters on the rear of this unit. So we'll go ahead and lay this down onto the Velcro. Velcro strip to Velcro strip. Like that. And now those two are now firmly attached. So we have a start of the booth. First two pieces assembled. Yay. Next is the opposite side. Do the same thing. Best we can. There's no little arrows or anything pointing saying a line here. So we just try to do it the best we can by eye. So there we have it. So there's the, the main portion of the structure of the booth. Now we're going to attach the front to the sound reducer and place in line with the base plate. This is the thing they call the sound reducer, this big thick thing we were talking about earlier. And this is the front, what they're calling the front. It's the part that's behind the microphone. And in the same way that the base had protective fabric to keep the Velcro hooks from getting hooked on random things, as does the sound absorber. So again, very thoughtful, very thoughtful packaging, I have to say. Very impressive. Okay. Because you know how annoying it is when Velcro hooks get hooked on everything when you don't want them to. So I'll line those up. Okay. Standing up. Easier to work on this thing. Let's go ahead and bring the sides up as it says in the instructions. I think I can't hold them both at the same time. So I'll bring up one side. And then we'll bring our top into place. As such. And zipper up. So we've got the zippers to line up on the side here. This is the first time ever assembling it, so, you know, the first time you do it, don't expect it to go together super easily. It probably takes a few shots of assembly before it really goes smoothly. Okay. Trick is I'm pushing my finger into the seam and pressing down on the acoustic material on the inside, and that seemed to help it, help the zipper along here. I'll try that same technique. Yeah, that's that's the trick. I don't know if you can see from that angle, but my thumb is pressing in to the acoustical material, and that's allowing the zipper to move. So, pro tip right there. You saw it here first, folks. Okay, do the same on the other side. Yeah, that works really brilliantly. You just have to press down on that acoustical material on the side while you're going along with the zipper. Perfect. That makes it so much easier. Okay. <clears throat> we'll flip it on the side here and we'll do this last back flap onto the base. And voila, that is the complete assembly of the Isovox 2. So let's get this table out of the way and uh, we'll switch to the speaker stand. Ready to go on its speaker stand. Now it doesn't come with a speaker stand. You'll have to get a standard speaker stand that you can buy online, pretty cheap. I might add the one I have here was 25 bucks with free shipping on Amazon. And this Isovox, which by the way, weighs roughly 25 pounds. So be prepared to be able to lift a 25 pound weight up onto a speaker stand. And uh, it's gonna go on something like this. You have to lift it up. Notice the hole in the base. 
line it up with the speaker stand and then rest it onto the top of the speaker stand. Let's go ahead and back it up so you can see what we're doing here. Here we go. And voila, there it is on the speaker stand. Now this speaker stand has a little metal uh, peg you can insert into one of the holes in its top section so that just in case it was to slip down a little bit, it will land on that peg and not come crashing down to the floor. You're definitely going to want to get the speaker stand at the height you want it first. Once this is on the speaker stand, it's very difficult to get the strength to lift up the pole with the weight of this already on top. So this might be one of those things that the first time you set it up takes two people. But there you have it. I've got the microphone mount in there already. And now we can start setting up our equipment. You also see the lighting tube, which I've put in place, which makes the inside look pretty styling, of course. I would probably read off of my cell phone. I have a pretty big screen on my phone, so I'll just simply put my phone in here. And this is what it might look like from inside the booth, looking up toward the microphone, into the microphone setup. I have the unit high enough that I can stand underneath it, it's still a little bit low for my height. I'm six feet tall, so I'd need to extend a little bit higher. But if I just slightly crouch just a little bit, I can get underneath the booth. All right, so now we can finally put our mic inside. So for this, I selected an Audio-Technica 3035, a mic I've had around for years, and it always sounds really nice. So let's just take a listen with the flap open, first of all. Now, for camera reasons, we've got the booth much lower than it would need to be for my height. So I'm just got my legs splayed out here, but I'm kind of got the thing on like uh, football pads and I'm up underneath the microphone. I'm speaking about three inches below the diaphragm of the microphone. I'm not speaking straight into the diaphragm, which everybody knows is the best way to avoid plosives. So I won't be popping the microphone. And I can look over this way towards my script and I can see my script rather easily. So this recording is being done with the Audio-Technica AT3035 inside the Isovox with the flap open. Let's go ahead and flip the flap shut for a second and see, how, see if it sounds different. Now we're inside the Isovox with the back flap shut. I immediately noticed a bit more low end buildup when I closed the back flap. So it definitely has a little bit more low end resonance that you'll have to EQ out later in post using a high pass filter or something like that. Now this microphone has its own high pass filter and it may be engaged. So let's take a look at the high pass filter switch and see if it's engaged. And if it is, I'll turn it off to simulate what it's gonna sound like with a mic that has no high pass filter switch. Okay, now the, the Audio-Technica mic is set to flat, no low cut. So you'll probably hear quite a bit more low end buildup inside the Isovox. And again, let's try it with the flap shut. So now we're inside of the Isovox 2 with the flap totally shut. My guess is that this is gonna work best with the flap open for most people. Unless you're trying to get that last five to 10% of echo reduction, because if it's a super reverberant room, shutting the flap may be necessary. But I think for a lot of you, working with the flap open, you may get better results because it's a less boxed in and closed sound. But that's the way we're sounding with this mic. All the other reviews I've seen of this thing say that you can't use a shotgun mic because of the way the mic is set up, the way it's mounted, the space. But let's see, I've got an Audio-Technica 835. Let's see if I can make that mic fit inside the Isovox. We'll be right back. So I thought, how could we put a shotgun mic in here? Well, one way you could, you could get a gooseneck type device that can clamp onto the existing microphone mount and put your shotgun mic sort of up and in the corner. That seems to be a method that might work, that might work for you guys. I also have this little mini tripod with a shock mount. That could work as well. You could just simply set the tripod in there and put the shotgun mic in sort of at an angle pointing, pointing toward you like that. 
And that's another way that you could mount a shotgun mic inside this unit pretty nicely. So I'm not too concerned about working with a shotgun mic. I think it could be usable. But anything longer than maybe a six or seven inch long mic could be pretty tight. Sennheiser 416 may be a tad tight for you in this small booth space. But uh, where there's a will, there's a way. I've taken the windscreen off so you can see that the microphone in here now is an AT-875R. Let's patch into that mic so you can actually hear what it sounds like. Okay, now we're on the Audio-Technica AT-875R. Different microphone, different design. This is more of a shotgun, short shotgun, pencil mic type microphone. And um, I find this mic works really well in booths because it doesn't have a lot of low-end pickup. So this mic could be the perfect mic inside the Isovox. Let's try it with the flap shut. Now we're inside the Isovox 2 AT-875R on a little gooseneck mounted inside the booth. And, you know, it's kind of cool because without that big cardioid mic in front of my face, I'd have plenty of room in here to put some copy. Question is, can I operate my device and change pages? Okay, maybe a little bit difficult. It's not impossible, it's a little awkward, but you could reach inside and do a page turn or a script change or something else without too much trouble. But that's what it sounds like inside the Isovox 2 with a shotgun microphone. So final thoughts on the Isovox 2. It's a very innovative product. It is built at the highest, highest, utmost quality, I have to say. I'm really happy with the construction quality of it. I like that there was a lot of thought put into making sure it had some ability to absorb bass frequencies with that big, thick bass absorber in the back. It doesn't seem it does enough for most microphones. If you don't have a low-cut switch or a high-pass filter, you're going to have to set one up in your software and filter it out in post because there definitely is some bass buildup. With the AT-875R, because it doesn't have much low-end pickup, it probably does a better job and you guys will get to hear it on the video and you can compare how that mic sounds to the AT3035 that we used earlier. But I have to say it's a pretty innovative product and it could be a portable product for you if you have a big suitcase, you could throw it in a bag and take it with you on the road. But many of you are gonna find it just too much of a commitment to travel with this thing. Perfect though for a small home, a bedroom studio, or some place where much more space is not available to record in. Thanks a lot for watching. This has been George Whittem for georgethetech.com. Stay tuned for more videos here on this channel. Just kind of getting ramped up around here, so make sure you subscribe, don't miss another video. And click like. Also, comment below if you have any thoughts about this video, and I really appreciate your time. I'll see you guys next time at George the Tech.